considerable force. And what you say is very appealing. In fact, you do it in such a persuasive way that one wants to nod their head. <clears throat> Nevertheless, as a pro-choice Republican, my feeling is that you come with a brush that's a bit too broad, that you can still be a very moral person. You can still have agreement on the fact that the morality is the basis of the party, that the family values are the basis for the decency of the party, that they are critical, that the destruction of the family is at the heart of a lot of our problems. And I think you can still feel all those moral issues are at the center of our party without saying that, however, notwithstanding all your convictions about all those moral issues, if you don't also think that abortion should be illegal, somehow all your moral convictions about the family and everything else are negated, and the whole party is doomed to failure unless we also uphold the notion of abortion. Now, of course, the issue of abortion is a very difficult one. It's like an immovable object and an irresistible force. It's pretty difficult to come to a definitive conclusion. There is none, and I probably would be very unskilled as an uh, advocate against you in handling the issue because I'm not prepared to do so. But what I was feeling as I sat here was that I think you can have a lot of feeling about morality and being at the center of the party without feeling that being pro-choice negates all that and somehow foretells the destruction of the party. You know, I, I understand. I understand the sentiment. I understand the sentiment. And I think that there's a certain amount of truth in it. I am not declaring that if somebody disagrees with me on abortion, they are taking some broad-based immoral stance on every issue. That's not the point. It's not the point at all. There are a lot of decent, good, moral people. They are called our founders. They were people who had tremendous moral insight, which I deeply respect. They came to some tremendous conclusions about human life and human nature, which I, in fact, embrace and think to be the best truth that we've discovered as yet about human affairs, in politics especially. All of this was true of them. But for all that admiration, it does not entirely negate the fact that a blighted, blasted, unjust institution was tolerated by their actions. That does not make them entirely evil men and women, but it does not change the fact of that injustice and the fact that every human being ultimately was responsible for struggling against it. So yes, the, the people who disagree on abortion and take the pro-abortion side, the pro-choice side, they can be perfectly decent, moral human beings. I will respect their moral conclusions just as I respect the moral conclusions of the founders. And I will fight the evil they tolerate just as I would have fought the evil tolerated by our founders. And you'll excuse me because that's the lesson of my history. And I will stand with that lesson, fall with that lesson, fight with that lesson, die if need be for that lesson because people shall never be enslaved again by the principle that one human being, whether it be a mother or a slave owner, has the right to treat another human life as property.